been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler. A conqueror. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Okay, you all saw the thumbnail. We think that the Kang from Quantumania is He Who Remains, and I'm gonna prove it to you in this video. Hold on, I know that you're all about to tell me that these two variants are not the same person and that I've completely misunderstood how the multiverse works. Wait just a few minutes, give me a chance to change your mind. Now, when I say that these two variants are the same, what I mean is Kang will become He Who Remains, and that there are many clues in Quantumania and Loki that might prove this. So let's explain how Kang becomes He Who Remains. Come on, come on, let's talk. Okay, first let's address the obvious. In theory, Kang and He Who Remains are the same person because of how the multiverse works. They all started as Nathaniel Richards and they share similar histories. But somewhere along the way, all the variants began diverging from one another into alternate versions, and that is because of time travel. So that's how the Council of Kang exists. In fact, we see that many of the variants in the arena are very similar to the Kang from Quantumania. Well, it's sort of about that guy who actually looks like He Who Remains. Aw, oh, look at you keeping track of the Easter eggs in all these videos. So you're right, Doug, there is one variant in the credit scene that looks like He Who Remains, but I think that variant was thrown in as an Easter egg and nothing that we should pay too much attention to. Anyways, they are all Kang. Also, Kang and He Who Remains have two very different personalities and demeanors, and there's also the scars. All of it being acknowledged and understood, and I'm still fully convinced that He Who Remains is the future version of Kang. What? What? Who are you? Who are you? You're me? I've come from the doctor's timeline to make sure you take that job. It's essential to our future. But didn't Kang die? Well, sort of, but I'll explain that later too. Let's start with the biggest clue that these are the same person. According to Kang, the multiverse is dying. The other Kangs are playing with time, like children. They keep traveling through time, creating countless new universes. The multiverse is so overgrown with branching timelines that endless incursions are triggered. An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes and they collide destroying one or both entirely. Universes are colliding and destroying each other. This keeps happening everywhere throughout time and space, creating a shockwave chain reaction that is killing the entire multiverse. Kang tried to stop them by starting a multiversal war, but he lost and was exiled to the quantum realm. Kang tells Janet that he saw how it ends, and then he shows her a timeline shaped like a closed loop. But how does that save the multiverse? Well, it's simple. One timeline means that there is no chaos in the multiverse because there is no multiverse. There will be one universe with no variance. All that Kang needs to do is stop any branches in the timeline. This means erasing any variance that might break the timeline and create new alternate universes. This is exactly what He Who Remains did with the Sacred Timeline. Oh, and I'm about to say He Who Remains a lot, so sometimes I'm just going to shorten that to HWR. I like it. So, eons ago, there was a multiversal war that nearly destroyed all of reality, a war fought by the Kang variants. HWR ended the war after he weaponized a multiversal beast called Eliath. He wiped out all of his variants and their own universes. Afterwards, he created a new protected universe, a perfect non-branching closed loop called the Sacred Timeline. Isn't that what Kang wanted to do? Exactly right. HWR achieved everything that Kang was planning. It can't be a simple coincidence that two different Kang variants want to create this sacred timeline. Coincidence? I think not! I mean, sure, in an infinite multiverse, it technically makes sense for multiple Kangs to end up doing the exact same thing. But in the context of storytelling and character arcs, they share the same motivation for a reason. And there's more. Wait. What? I'm right in the middle of proving that Kang is he who remains. Yeah, but, but Kang's dead. You gotta explain that first. Right you are. Let's address that. All right, so Kang gets pulled into the multiversal engine core after Scott overcharged with pin particles, and then the core blows up. So it kind of looks like Kang died, but come on, he was sucked into a device that's connected to the entire multiverse. I'm fine! <laughs> totally fine! He might have teleported away right before the core blew up, or maybe he entered the probability storm inside the core, and that somehow sent him into another universe. Now, we have another theory on how Kang will return, but this ties into a longer explanation later in this video. So, for now, let's just assume that this Kang variant shall return. Who are you? Just a man. You're just... a man. Flesh and blood. Don't tell me I'm a disappointment. Now, let's explain how he became HWR after he comes back. According to HWR, the multiverse exists in an endless cycle of death and rebirth. When HWR dies, the sacred timeline unravels and splits into a new multiverse. At that moment, all of Kang's variants came back, and because of time travel, it's as if they always existed. And as HWR says, he will be reborn and end up right back in the same place because of the nature of time and the multiverse. Is 
And this is how Kang will become the next iteration of He Who Remains. You plunge your blade in my chest and an infinite amount of me start another multiversal war and I just end up right back here anyways. His prediction is proven right by everything Quantumania revealed about the Kangs and the multiverse. Though at this point, it's unclear if the multiverse is stuck in an actual time loop like the one in Doctor Strange, or if what HWR actually meant is that one of his variants will repeat his decisions and reach the same outcome. Most branching timelines are actually not a lot different from each other, so most Kang variants end up making the same decisions. I mean, we even see how many of them wear the exact same armor. On top of that, they are time travelers. As Kang says, he looked into the future to see how it all ends. This knowledge affects his decisions. And don't worry about the days. What days? What's really going to bake your noodle later on is, would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? Now, some variables might change in every iteration, but eventually the equation remains the same. The sum of everyone's decisions leads to the same outcome every time. And that ending is a version of HWR winning the war and creating the sacred timeline. And then the whole process repeats itself all over again. And it happens again and again and again because it's supposed to, because it has to. So they're not the same guy, like, exactly. Okay, look, I might be cheating a bit here because these two variants are not identical, like, down to their atoms. They are still technically two separate variants. But for all intents and purposes, they are the same person. This Kang is destined to repeat everything that HWR already did before. So in the end, he's just a prisoner of time, just like everyone else. And how did Kang describe time? It's a cage. But what about the scars? You want to know how I got these scars? True, Kang has scars on his face, HWR doesn't. But like I said, some things change in every cycle, so I guess that maybe this time around, he's got scars. But look at what HWR says here. I'm older. I'm older than I look. He's way older than he looks. Now, Kang is not immortal. There's even an older looking Kang in the credit scene. That's Immortus. HWR might have some regenerating tech that keeps him looking younger. Maybe it includes some healing capabilities, which remove the scars. In fact, he might be staying younger the same way the Scott was turned into a baby. It's the EPR paradox. Instead of pushing Lang through time, you might have wound up pushing time through Lang. I mean, Smart Hawk pretty much created an immortality machine, which by the way, is a one-way ticket for Steve Rogers to re-enter the MCU. You just blew my mind. Now, let's get back to some more similarities between Kang and HWR. I know it all, and I've seen it all. I know how it ends. So after creating the Sacred Timeline, HWR established the TVA, short for Time Variance Authority. Their job was to enforce the Sacred Timeline and erase any variants that threatened to branch this timeline. Kang was already doing stuff like this before his exile. He burned whole universes out that triggered incursions. So the TVA and Eliath are essentially more efficient methods to do this. A really horrific method, but this is Kang we're talking about. HWR explained that the only thing that can break this utopia of his are the variants, specifically his variants. And notice how he answers Loki here. And what are you so afraid of? Me. This is verbatim Kang's answer in the movie. When he's asked who's threatening the multiverse, his response is me. A lot of me. And then he reiterates that he means his variants, just like HWR. If you think I'm evil, just wait till you meet my variants. Now, pay attention to how Kang describes his motivations. He says that before his exile, he took control over the chaos that his variants were causing. Janet calls Kang a monster for planning to wipe away any universe that's a threat to him. But Kang says these actions are of a conqueror. He burns the broken worlds and makes a new one. And wouldn't you call HWR the ultimate conqueror? He took control of the chaos, pruned all of his variants in their broken universes, and created a new, singular timeline. He conquered the multiverse and ruled his timeline like a god. When HWR describes his other variants, he says that some of them work together. And by this, he means the Council of Kangs. For a while, there was peace. Narcissistic, self-congratulatory peace. And that doesn't sound like HWR holds them in high regard. He's sort of mocking them because he remembers that their narcissistic self-congratulatory peace was the very thing that was killing the multiverse. And from the credit scene, the three leaders of the council decide to wage war on Earth-616 because they began to touch the multiverse. They see the multiverse as their domain and the heroes are invading their kingdom. Meaning that in relation to the present timeline, they're in the narcissistic self-congratulatory peace stage. And the next phase is the multiversal war. I mean, literally, the war that will happen in phase six with Avengers King Dynasty and Secret Wars. Also, notice that Kang usually refers to his variants as versions of himself. But when speaking about the council, he always refers to them as they. They made contact. They, they shared technology using the best of their universes to improve 
the others. As if he doesn't even want to be associated with them. It's only when HWR starts talking about the countering variants that he refers to them as himself. HWR even says that at some point he was named a conqueror. However, from what Kang said, he didn't conquer universes just for the sake of ruling. He did it to burn down broken universes that threatened the multiverse. Granted, Kang is obviously very biased toward himself, but notice this moment right here. I'm tired and I'm older. I might be reading between the lines, but it looks like HWR reminisces on his past as a conqueror with some regret, almost like he remembers the terrible things he did back when he was Kang the Conqueror. I'm an old man, filled with regret, waiting to die alone. There's a clear sense of melancholy and regret in HWR's words. He's clearly not proud of the things he's done, and he constantly refers to himself as a villain. The devil. Evil. Dictator. Devil. We all done horrible, terrible, horrific things. But he also says that there was no other way. Without the me, without the TVA, everything burns. He and Kang have this sympathy for the devil thing going on for themselves. Both of them explain their actions as terrible things that they must do to prevent something far worse. They are the only ones who know how to save the multiverse. Kang and HWR are very good at manipulation. HWR tells Loki everything he needed to hear to bring him to his side, to the point where he's willing to turn against Sylvie. He even uses Ms. Minutes to offer Loki and Sylvie to get everything that they always wanted. Kang employs the same tactics with Janet. He tells her that she could get back her lost time, reunite with Hope as if she never left. Also, Kang had an army of mindless robots in the quantum realm. HWR had the TVA, which is composed of brainwashed variants. Speaking of the TVA, let's talk about the statue at the end of Loki. Build a statue for me. We will build a big statue for you. After HWR dies, Loki is sent back to the TVA. Only something has changed. Nobody remembers him. What are you talking about? Who are you? What's your name? And where previously there were statues of the timekeepers, there's now a monument to Kang. Back when Loki ended, we assumed this statue meant that a Kang variant took over the TVA. But after Quantumania, this statue has a whole new meaning. We are in the past, the TVA's past, and more importantly, HWR's past back when he was Kang. The TVA exists in a reality where time is acting strange, but it's still a linear timeline. They have their own past, present, and future. So the TVA still has a timeline. HWR must have programmed a type of reset to the TVA, reverting the timeline to an earlier point in time. And this is a time when he rules openly before he installed the timekeepers as figureheads of the TVA. Anyways, we think that because the TVA is a separate timeline in the multiverse means that it's located inside the quantum realm. Kang already conquered the realm when he was trapped there. And don't forget, the realm is a universe that exists outside of time and space, yet it still has its own strange timeline, just like the TVA. How long have you been here? I don't know, it's hard to say, you know, time passes differently here in the TVA. Time works differently in the quantum realm. There are many similarities between the quantum realm and the TVA, like the fact that the realm is used for both time and multiversal travel. And it's very likely that HWR was using quantum energy for all the TVA's tech. This will also connect to Kang's return after his supposed death in Quantum Mania, since he's technically still stuck in the Quantum Realm. It's possible that Kang was sent into another layer of the Quantum Realm. Remember, when someone enters the subatomic universe, they need to shrink significantly through multiple levels of the realm to enter this layer. So what happens to someone who shrinks to a size that is smaller than an atom? When Kang shrunk into the core before it exploded, he may have entered a section of the Quantum Realm unlike any we've seen before, a reality that exists outside of time and space, where Kang might find a certain timeline consuming smoke monster. That's right, Kang's death is how he finds Elias. That first variant encountered a creature created from all the, the tears in reality, capable of consuming time and space itself. And then he will weaponize the creature, use its power to return to the quantum realm, and transform it into what the TVA will eventually become. And after that, he'll start the multiverse of war and unleash Eliath on his variants and their timelines. And that is how Kang becomes He Who Remains. So all of these are the reasons why He Who Remains is the future version of Kang the Conqueror. All of this makes Kang into a far better villain in the MCU, and it's why he needs to come back. His motivation aligns perfectly with HWR. He is a really interesting villain, and Quantum Mania already set the stage for him to be the big bad of the multiverse saga. Sure, they can always introduce a different Kang, but after Quantum Mania, that'd be way too awkward. I am Kang! They already got Kang. Just bring him back and unleash him on the multiverse. But what do you guys think? Could Kang become He Who Remains? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.